All right, we're basically done with the actual modeling in our dungeon here, but there's a lot of bonus content that I want to include. And in this scene, I've done a few of them already. You can see that I've added a little bit of atmospheric kind of fog to the scene. That's actually quite easy to do. I'll do that in a very short upcoming bonus uh, video. I've gone through with the knife tool and kind of cut up the floor tiles a little bit and extruded a few and tipped a few to make the floor tiles look a little more rough. There's a depth of field going on right here, so you can see that things in the foreground are a little blurry and things in the background a little sharper. Again, that's just a couple of knowing where to click and a few checkboxes in the camera settings and the render settings. Just for fun, I threw in a little plane down over here and I created a reflective greenish material to make it look like the trench was flooded. Uh, there's a little boolean operation here in this back wall here. I just put a cube and made it tall and skinny and put it in there and then uh, put a light behind it. And I recommend doing something like that. You know, in the image that you've been seeing at the beginning of the videos, it's a much bigger window with bars and things like that. That's great. I just think there's so much going on on this side of the composition that it needs something to kind of bring the eye over here um, that, um, that I would recommend doing. But, you know, it doesn't need to be this shape. It can be anything you like. Have fun with it. Uh, the one thing that is going to be maybe a little bit longer video is that we haven't done the sculpting on the stairs. And I'm just going to show you some of the basics of jumping into the sculpting mode and how we can kind of like wear down these like beautifully sharp. We got all this like sort of broken, you know, cruddy stuff here, but this like absolutely perfectly sharp stairs. So we can come in here and, and do a little bit of sculpting on this. And that might be a slightly longer video because it's an entirely different workspace and set of tools. Again, optional. But the one I'm going to show you right now is how to add these little grates up above here. And this is actually pretty easy. And it's a great technique for adding in windows or gates or bars or anything where you've got like a lot of this sort of thing going on. So I'm just going to turn back on my overlays and I'm going to jump into the top view. And I'm going to switch back into the solid view just so we can kind of see what we're doing. And just out of luck, when we made the arches here, they were uh, two meters by two meters basically so that's the default shape that is created so if i hit shift a and go to mesh and plane it's exactly the right size it's two meters by two meters so i'm just going to pull this little plane up in here and i'll pull it up and just kind of roughly to the level of top of the arches there i'm going to say shift d and enter and make a duplicate just push it out of the way over here because we're going to do this twice with two different techniques here so i guess maybe i'll just i have this one selected i'll do this one first so with this little uh, plane selected what i'm going to do is hit the tab key to enter into the edit mode and then I'm going to right click on top of the plane and right underneath your cursor should be the word subdivide. There's a couple of ways you could do loop cuts and things, but this is really fast just to go to subdivide and then down here in the adjustments window, just click that right arrow once. Just click it just to pop, pop it up to two there. And now we've got a little three by three, you know, kind of a tic-tac-toe grid here, which will work great for the bars above our openings over here. So this is really the same for both techniques here. What makes this one different here is the a fun one way to do this is to come over here and add a modifier. And I'm going to come down here to the modifier properties button. That's the little blue wrench and click on that. And then the very last one under the generate column over here is a fun one to use and it's, it's called wireframe. So if you click on that little wireframe modifier, you can see over here, there is some options and I'm actually going to e exit out of edit mode so we can see what's happening. You might see like, well, I added the wireframe, but nothing happened over here. That's because a lot of modifiers allow you to, to make changes to the mesh uh, something like a subdivision surface modifier that, that rounds everything over if you want something round. Well, you can go back into the base mesh in edit mode and see everything very kind of hard and angular. So it kind of takes off the modifier. That's not true of all of them, but it is true with this one. So I'm going to hit the tab key to go back into the object mode. And you can see, oh, sure enough, we've got this kind of like window or grid or whatever. But these are pretty slender. I mean, this might be okay for mullions in a window or whatever, but this is a little thin. So I'm just going to come over here to the thickness tab and just push that up there. And you can see it's kind of making this sort of look diamond diamondy looking shape over there. Also notice that if you check this boundary box over here, it just adds it all the way around. And you can do that or not. It doesn't really matter. This is going to kind of get buried in the in the wall of the uh, of the arches, so we won't really see that. But if you if you wanted it to be there, you could just check that. Also notice that replacing original, yours might look more like a waffle when you first make it because it doesn't automatically take away the original geometry. But in this case, I've got replace original checked because I do want, I don't want that to have to get rid of that, um, all those other faces in there. I want it to be open like this. And as you can see, you could make a lot of things like this. You could take any shape you want. You could take a, an icosphere and cut it in half and then throw on one of these and get those kind of like monkey bar dome things that you see in playgrounds and stuff, anything like that. Sort of like, you know, the uh, sort of glass greenhouses or whatever. Lots of fun things that you can do 
with this. Um, and you can play around. There's a few other uh, choices that you can do down over here, but that gives you the idea. So that's one way to do that. So, okay, that's all set and ready to go. We could apply that modifier and then just sort of drag it and put it into position as I have done with these other ones. But let's take a look at the other option. I'm going to do that same first step, select the plane. Let me get it a little more centered here. I'm selecting this. I am right, oh, hitting the tab key to jump into edit mode and then I'm right clicking and subdividing and just coming down and popping it up to two subdivisions so that I get these nine cuts. And then I'm going to go over here into the edge mode here and with the edge mode selected I'm going to hit control B to bevel these edges and then you can see what it's doing is it's I'm grabbing those middle edges and it's not doing it to the outside edges because there's no way for them to go there's no geometry out there so we can just say ah, that looks pretty good like that and select those edges now what we need to do is and we're going to want to get rid of these planes first so if we just select a plane and hit delete and then faces that will solve that problem so I can go over here and say shift and I'm just going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to grab all of these faces in here and then hit delete and then faces and you you can see that it's it's removed that. Now be careful, depending on how you do that, if you like delete the edges or whatever, it might leave little bits. Uh, and you want to do this ahead of time because if you do this next step, the extrusion part ahead of time, it might make the underside hollow. So just kind of keep an eye on what you're doing. So I'm going to hit the A key just to select everything inside this object because what I want, the little tic-tac-toe here is the is all that's left here. So hitting the A key to select all gives me everything selected. And I can hit E to extrude and then I can just pull that up a little bit and there we go. And look, the underside looks great too. And you could throw in a bevel on top of this if you wanted this to look a little bit more round or whatever. And of course this is just two ways to do this. Drag this into position and you're good. You could take a couple of cylinders, you could take four cylinders and just turn them at 90 degree angles and kind of intersect them together. You could, I don't know, there's probably dozens of different ways in, you, in which you could create this. But I just wanted to show you that these are two really good quick tricks for making things like windows, really more importantly than overhead grating in your dungeon there, um, creating something that's like a window or a, a door or a gate or whatever, that kind of thing is probably going to be more useful in the future. So remember the wireframe modifier and then just that control B bevel. Oh, hey, one thing I forgot to mention on, on that is that don't forget that if you bevel an edge, let me just put, um, I'll go back to edge mode and just show you this one thing that I forgot to mention, control B to bevel. If I start beveling that edge there, remember you do want this to be set to one segment. So if this is set to like 5 or 10 or whatever, then it's you're going to get a whole bunch of extra lines. You just want to crank that down to the one segment before you do that bevel. And that's just beveling uh, one line, one segment just kind of makes two parallel lines on either side of it. And that can be really useful for a lot of things. Using this little bevel trick is great. You can also take a, a, a square plane and then bevel the top of it to make an arch. And there's all kinds of things that the bevel can do beyond just rounding over an edge. And here's just one of many. So you can see even, even that kind of look, that kind of octet, you know, if you do this to the, all the edges you get this kind of octagonal look and that's kind of cool so definitely check out the bevel tool and the wireframe modifier is great and very quick ways to make things like windows and gates and doors